So welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and uh, unboxing, well, unveiling, whatever you want to call it, of um, this Flames of War Soviet Starter Force um, Heavy Assault Group. Contains 15 vehicles, 4 guns and 12 infantry teams. Now I bought this um, at Boards and Swords at CrackCon a few weeks ago. Um, Ian there was uh, selling them off basically half price and um, while I don't know that I'm going to be playing any Flames of War anytime soon uh, I seem to be heading into a 15 mil Second World War um, using O Group uh, with some of the guys down the club um, so I thought well it was just too good a deal to turn down so I picked this up so um, I'm going to open it up um, have a look at what's inside and well we can see on the side on the back what's inside comes with four IS-2 tanks, two 1SU, sorry ISU-122s, uh, four SU-76 assault guns and two of the big beasties the ISU-152s has a uh, so you have a choice of the guns, either being 57mm or 76mm. You've got three BA-64 um, armoured cars, a Commissar team, two heavy machine gun teams, a unit leader and eight rifle teams. Also comes, if you're interested in Flames of War, uh, with the rules, models and cards. Wow. Quite a good deal actually. Um, so um, let's open it up, have a look. Okay, so just checked it out. Uh, £63 something or other on um, a couple of the secondary um, sites like Goblin Games and what have you. So yeah, I think I got this for about 35 or something stupid. So no brainer. Um, so a lot of plastic in here. Let's have a quick look at what we get in this box. Oh, lovely. Can't be a load of plastic, hey? Um, even some bubble wrap. I love it. So we've got the... Um, what's this? So, bit, so this is the, the explanation of what you've got here in terms of your points. Even got the construction, how to construct the tanks which is brilliant, how to put the guns together, love this, this is great because so many uh, companies don't do this, <laughs> so you're kind of left trying to work out what the hell you do. Um, got the unit cards here, very nice, nicely produced, good value for 60 quid I think to get all that, there's the book, the rule book, and oh they actually uh, they do give you separate cards which is brilliant so there's the unit cards and also looks like they give you the transfers for it this is better and better very nice indeed let's have a look at some of the vehicles let's take this sprue that looks like that must be the ISU Nice clean models by the look of it. Now I think pretty much all of these vehicles had the same kind of chassis. So it does make it a little bit easier to manufacture. Very nice. They do look like they go together pretty well. So you've got... That's one of the assault guns. That's either the ISU or the um, uh, 122 or the 152. Not quite sure which. Yeah, these are nice. These are very nice. There's all the that's the the basically um yeah. How many do we say we got in each? Fifteen vehicles. So yeah, so these must be the ISUs. Yeah, there we go. Three, four of them. Sorry, ISUs. These should be the IS-2s. And these are the big guns. Very nice. So, they look like they're colour-coded as well, so easy to find out. This looks like the assault guns, the um, Su-76s. Again, nice models. 
Nice looking models. More of them there. Good. What else we get here? These are all the tracks. Oh, there's little dinky cars. The BA64 Scout cars. Very nice. These are good little kits. I'm, I'm actually extremely impressed. There's some of the infantry. Surprisingly well detailed. A little bit of flash on them, but not too much. There's the heavy machine gunners. Somebody pointing, so it must be an officer. Somebody with a megaphone, so he must be the commissar, I'm guessing. Very nice. Another sprue of those. We've got more in there. Oh, these are the bases. You get the bases as well. Sweet. And this looks like the anti-tank guns. Very nice indeed. Right, I'm going to put some of these together, see what they look like, and I'll be back. Right then, um, let's have a go at putting some of these models together. Um, it look, it's intriguing. You've got the the chassis for the um, ISU, sorry, IS2s, so four of those, and you've got four of the chassis for either this uh, ISU-122s or the ISU-152s um, but the the tracks and all the other components are um, identical now I know um, they were based on the same vehicle but it does mean making the models a lot easier because you just got eight sprues of tracks and um, underhull whatever that is that, and there's also some machine guns, um, some barrels and what have you on there as well. So, um, yeah, makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to pop some of these out. We'll start with uh, an IS-2 and um, try and put it together, see how easy it is. Right then, uh, I've taken apart all the bits off the sprue that I look like I need. Um, interesting the way they've done this. So um, the guide, um, which comes with the with the section with the um, uh, the book, kind of doesn't. It shows you the couple of options, but it doesn't really explain like what's the difference between these two holes. <laughs> um, what I hadn't realised is they do, uh, you could do an IS-85 uh, or an IS-2. So I'm assuming one of these is the IS-85 and one is the IS-2, but I can't see any notification on the sprue or on the hull itself which one's which. Now it's only the fact I used to play a bit of World of Tanks, I recognise the IS-2's frontal hull there, that bit there. Um, so I think, well I think I do. I think that's the IS-2. Um, so, anyway, by the by, let's see how easy this is to put together. Uh, I've got my trusty uh, Revel contact glue. Um, I've got the instructions. What could possibly go... Oh, I know what I have forgotten to do. I've forgotten to clip off the <laughs> vital bit, the under, under chassis. Uh, just bear with me while I do that. With my increasingly blunt clippers. Um, there appears to be a few options on this uh, accessory sprue. I'm going to call it the accessory sprue, the one with this, um, with all the uh, uh, the tracks and whatnot. Um, and I suspect that's for the uh, IS uh, ISU 122s or, or 152s. Um, because it doesn't appear they go on the main battle tanks. Right, bear with me. Uh, so that's where that looks like that. Uh, ba -ba -bum. We need to, first of all, put the tracks on the chassis. So they've got a little sort of uh, groove things here. So And they've got groove things here. So I'm assuming... Bob's your auntie, look at that, it goes together nicely. Um, just check we've got that okay, looks like it. 
think that's the right way around as well. Can't go the other way around, can it? No, can't go the other way around. So that's the right way around. So a bit of glue. Bish bosh bish. Put a bit on here. I don't know how much we're going to need. Assembly here. Nice little fit. Um, I need next. Right, so that's the the sh the bottom of the hull. Uh, next bit. Let's put together the turret because I suspect this is going to be the bit fiddlier. So we have uh, two bits here. A dry fit like. Oops. Right there they go. So they go together like that. Oops. Flat bit to flat bit. Like that. And I'm guessing the, the gun shield goes on there. I don't know which way around it goes. No, other way around. There we go. Looks like there's no mobility, so we will glue that together. Do seem to be nice fits, at least. Get it right way around, of course. There we go. Give that a few seconds to bond. There's a, a machine gun on the back. go it has a little um, sort of a, a, a nodge a, no, a nozzle sort of uh, a notch that's what I'm trying to say uh, cut out of the actual machine gun piece which fits onto a little um, sticky out bit on the hull which is rather nice so it fits very easily um, we need we have a choice of um, uh, we can have the hatch open or we can have it closed for simplicity I'm going for it closed again I'm just trying to check whether there's a way round that this has to go looks to me like it needs to go that way round so we'll just stick that in place. Again, nice easy fit. Quite pleased with these. These are actually fantastically easy to put together. So there you go. Let that bond. We have the gun barrel. And again, there were two gun barrels. Uh, you could do the 85mm or the 122. The 85 goes on the IS85 and the uh, 120. Uh, two goes on the IS2. There's also a associated gun um, shield, I suppose it is, uh, to go with each. And you'll find that the, the 122 won't fit in this, especially not if you put it the wrong way around. It won't fit in that properly, whereas it will fit in the one that's correct. So, again, there's a little sort of, I don't know whether you can see that, sort of uh, a groove cut in this which conforms nicely with the 
a step on the inside of the gun shield and so they should fit pretty snugly together and stay that way there you go lovely um, next up uh, we've got let's attach the um, hull to the tracks again looks to fit quite snugly which is great I'm not a model maker so anything that's easy like this gets my vote every single time a load of glue on it slot those together make sure the joins all correct I think it is and there she is very nice indeed and then you may have just seen me kick it off the around the table there's a little sort of uh, widget there which is actually the sits in the hole in the top of the uh, hull and you stick the other half the other side to here on the underside of the turret and that's your that's how the turret rotate Obviously it'll take a minute or two to adhere, so we'll just let that glue. Um, meanwhile we will put on, there's a track plate, spare tracks. Which I think go on the front, yep yeah, they do. So we'll stick them there. Oops. Like that, again they've got little... Um, sticky out bits which fit into a perfect into the holes in the tracks so they can't really go any other way which is great and it also nicely covers up what little bit of hole there was at the join of the hull there um, and also there's an option to put on um, some um, I guess they're water barrels are they I don't know so how do these fellas go on So you've got long and short ones. I think they go on the side here. Whoops, gotta put glue everywhere. I think they go like that. So we go. Again, they've got a sort of bit that seems to tell you where they need to fit. like that there's a sort of little ridge running around the top of the tank and the edge here which that seems to clip onto quite nicely and then we'll do the same with the bigger one I think these are spare fuel and, and what have you for the tanks whoever thought it was a good idea to stick spare fuel on the outside of a tank hey? Oh, I didn't, haven't cleaned up the flash too much on that one. Must come back and do that once it's stuck solid. Just the ends there haven't quite cleaned up. So there you go. That's that so far. Um, and we need to put the machine gun on the front. There's a little again a little connection here. Got a bit of glue there. There's a. a to connect it there. Come on, my eyesight's doing me in here, I can't actually see where I'm connecting. There we go. And there's the first one. Oops. There we go. Perfect. What a lovely little tank. What a joy to put together as well. Wow, that is awesome. So I am going to make up the rest, and the um, ISUs look like they go exactly the same principle. So say you've got the choice of the 152s and the 122s, um, but basically the same kind of arrangement in terms of how you put them together. Um, so 
they should be as easy as pi, same as these uh, ISUs, sorry, IS2s, too many ISs. But I'm very impressed with that. So I'm going to make the rest of them up, but let me do some of the others. Right, so next we're going to do the BA64 armor cars. Um, again, I've popped them off their sprues. Um, there's only two variants you can do with these. Sorry, I just bent the barrel there. Um, you can do a machine gun version or uh, a PTRD version. I'm assuming that's some kind of um, kind of like a smoothbore anti-tank gun of some sort. I don't really know. Or maybe it's just an anti-tank rifle. Um, somebody will know. Um, so what I will say on this is the sprue seems to be very different. It's got quite a chunky connection which is much harder to um, cut off and also to um, clean up afterwards. Leaves a bigger uh, mess, shall we say, which is um, a little disappointing. However, the I mean, it's a tiny little kit, so there's not an awful lot to it. So you've got the, the, the lower half, um, of which just seems to slot together like that. It's got a ridge at the bottom, which is what attaches to the other half. So we'll do just that, put a bit on there, there we go, nice and snug, I think we'll do the turret exactly uh, next, um, it works pretty much the same as the other, on the tank you've got a a connector that you stick to the bottom of the turret so we'll do that next I think put that in like that and that gives you the nipple that connects just make sure that's pushed in well enough into the top of the vehicle there um, We'll leave those to set and come back to it. Don't take long with this glue. We've got the the top of the vehicle sits on the chassis like that. No particular connection points that I can see, just generally. So we'll wax some glue down this. them together there's a clever actually there is a bit of a clever bit the um, the grill overhangs slightly which holds the holds the model together nicely just give it a bit of a squeeze let the glue do its stuff there we go and we'll go back to the turret so the turret is open topped anyway there's our machine gun which is quite fiddly and tiddly so way round it goes particularly. Just slots on the end. Okay, that's easy enough. Put a bit of glue. There. Let's see around my fat fingers that on the front. What I like about these kits so far is there's pretty much only one way round you can do it which means even an idiot like me shouldn't cock it up too much. There's also a spare wheel so we'll put the turret on like so and there's a spare wheel you can see the little indent there on the back which it goes into a bit of glue on it again on the inside of the wheel you can see there's a corresponding connection if you like whoops and there we are there's a little BA 64 Nice little kit. There we 
we go. And beside the IS, you can see the size difference. Also, you can see actually the colour of the of the plastic shows that they are very different substances. I prefer the harder plastic that the uh, IS has, but it's probably some kind of uh, problem with uh, the manufacturing process that's uh, made them use a different kind of plastic for the smaller one. But still, nice, and it'll paint up well, I'm sure. So let's do the Su-76, I think. So the next one is the Su-76 uh, anti-tank gun, um, which is an open-topped um, anti-tank gun. Um, and again, it's made slightly differently. Um, popped all the bits off. You've got the, the chassis, or the lower hull bit. Um, and you've got the tracks and the sides all in one this time again that's got that same sort of um, slotter base kind of idea here um, just slots in like that Oops. just get this right there we go and Similarly on the other side gets in like that. Again it's this slightly different plastic which I'm not sure I like as much. You can also see all the rounds <laughs> piled up on the side of this one. So let's whack some glue on it. Okay, so this one's a little bit more fiddly. It looks like you don't, it doesn't quite line up. We, you have to do the, uh, on the, on the Su, Su, um, Su 2, ISU, IS 2, um, it lined up naturally. This one doesn't seem to, so you've got to do a little bit more. I mean, it's not difficult, but. As I said before, I'm not a model maker. I want to play with my toys as quickly as possible. So I'll pop that on there. There we go. Make sure the front lines up with the lower bit. Give it a, give it a bit of a squeeze. Let it dry, and that's the lower part of the gun, or the tank. Um, there's the upper hull there, which will just sit straight on top like that. Once it's dried a bit more, um, we'll do the gun next, I think. Or the, the yeah, do the gun next. So we've got the gun shield here. Ooh, left a bit of fluff there. Bit of Missed this one when I was tidying them up. There we go. Um, so there's that. That looks like the breech of the gun there. And there's the gun and barrel. So that... That goes through like that I'm assuming and the gut the other half comes through the other side yeah look they slot together like that which way around that way around and then that slides through yeah it looks like you have to yeah, so you have to put the breech in first 
so it fits snugly like that and then the barrel will sit in the other side so let's glue that down like that then this bit is where the barrel goes like that there we go done a terrible job of cleaning up the flash on some of these or the connection points right so that's that bit done so I think the the base should be dried enough now whoops so we will try and put that on next so that slides in like how's this going there we go slots in like that so it's a bit fiddly definitely the fiddliest of all these tanks so far There we go. Ah, <laughs> that pop it straight back out again. All right, let's put some glue on that. Looks like the connection points are all around here. not too bad just took a little bit of wiggling in but not too bad at all okay that seems to have stuck down a bit better so we'll try and put the gun on next so that just seems to slot whoops just slots on the front there nice and easily that is good that's a nice fit bit of glue there we go. Nice, and then the back. Yeah, we've got a ten, we've got a plate here that sits on the back. Oops. Which way around does it go? Yeah, it was the way I had it the first time, that way around. Okay, that makes sense. Bit of glue again. Slide that in. Position it and line the nuts up. You see those little connections there? Just line those up. And there you go, that's done. And then there is one more, there's an exhaust which goes along. Where does it connect? Not terribly clear where it connects, but let's have a look. And there's something logical. It's got two little nuggets there. Does it go in that connection there to cover up that? Yeah, maybe it does. It's not very clear from the picture where that connects. It seems actually to be more up round here. Yeah, it's there. Not very clear. That's uh, another bit of a downer on the on the instructions. It doesn't really the picture that they show you doesn't really point exactly where you're supposed to connect things especially with this one it's actually showing it on the other side of, it's showing it's just sort of pointing that it needs to go on the other side of the tank but doesn't actually show you where 
<laughs> oh, hasn't quite popped together, which is really annoying. Anyway, there you go. You can see a bit fiddlier that one, definitely a bit fiddlier, uh, but um, they're coming together nicely. Right, next up uh, we've got one of the anti-tank guns. Um, I'm making the 76 millimeter. Um, only the wheels, the shield, the barrel, and the the I guess the the str <laughs> don't know what you call this the the frame that the thing puts together on um, to for this. So quite a straightforward build, uh, which I like. Um, are you looking warlords? Blimey. Some of your models, hard work to put together, anti-tank guns and things. So we put the wheels on first. There's one. There's two. Just make sure they're straight. Nice thing about having Um, sort of little um, squares on your cutting board as you can see when the wheels are lined up right he said looking at them to make sure they are because he'd look stupid otherwise uh, so that's that the the gun barrel itself has a sort of uh, nipple there which again sits in the um, on the lower um, don't know what you call it anyway where the gun wheels are there and then the gun shield drops over the top now what I don't know is quite how this fits where it fits exactly let's just trim a little bit more off that uh... there we go. just had a bit of extra flash there and I think again I would always suggest you do a bit of dry fitting before you you go for the sloppy one um, yeah it looks like it looks like that will only go where it should go which is great yeah so it won't go past that point on the barrel which is great that makes life a lot easier so I'm gonna go in put a little blob glue in there Set the gun, the nipple of the barrel in the, oh, I can't see. I'm doing it from too far away and I can't see it. And I'll just knock my wheels out of alignment. Ah, the difficulty of doing videos. There we go, that's in. Straighten the wheels back up again. Make sure the barrel's pointing straight. Again, useful with these, um, little squares that I can try and make sure that everything's lined up the way it should be just a smidge out there we go let that dry for a few seconds and then the the gun shield goes over the top Put a bit of glue around the inside of it. And slide that down. Oops. First time that's happened today, it's stuck to my finger. There we go. And there you got it, the gun. Beautiful. So, there we have it. That's all the vehicles, well, obviously the IS, <coughs> ISU-122 or the 152, uh, it's got to be done, but it's exactly the same as the um, IS-2 
uh, in terms of how it constructs. I mean, obviously there's different options for it to make it those those vehicles, but everything else is uh, is completed. <coughs> Excuse me, fumes of um, glue fumes going up my, my nose. So I will put the rest together, finish off tidying up the bits I've missed, like that little bit of connecting point there that oh, is going to annoy the hell out of me if I didn't get it. Um, and I will. Um, start to uh, prep them and um, maybe come back and show you how I painted them anyway see you in a bit so first up I'm going to show you how I've painted up the uh, infantry um, really simple I mean the 15 mil you know you know you don't need to do the eyeballs on them um, not unless you are some kind of amazing person um, so um, this is what one of the figures looked like really impressed with the detail on them um, for 15 mil they're extremely nice um, and all I've done is pop him out and then um, I have primed him using um, this Vallejo Halfords uh, the car people camouflage um, spray paint this is khaki ultra matte now I know outside of the UK you might struggle to get uh, this but I'm sure there's a very similar thing but any kind of khaki uh, spray will do and I've just made sure it's covered the figure completely head to toe um, make sure that there's good coverage so first up I'm going to apply the skin tone um, let me just get the light because I can't really see I'm trying to look on the camera and also look on the in here so let's just get oops Get some flesh tone on, that's rather a lot on there. There we go, and we'll just do his hands and the fingers coming through there. Can we see anything on the other side? Not really. A little finger there. Now, that's all I do, just blob that on, um, let that dry, and I'll be back. Okay, so that's pretty much dry. Um, I'm going to do his boots now. Um, the uh, figure appears to have um, sort of, uh, I guess, calf length boots, boots on, so just coming up to just below the knee. Um, so that's what I'm going with. I'm just using, for me, I'm just using this um, AK interactive uh, black uniform dark sh shadow. I quite like it. It's I've only just discovered it. it's got very dark, very dark black. Um, so we're just going to put this on generously. I'm using probably too thin a brush here, but it was the one that I picked up. So we'll stick with it, and we will just do the boots. Right there you go. He's done. Um, simple job. Just slap it all over and um, let that dry for a few, a few seconds. Um, I just only noticed I missed a little bit there on the seam. There we go. Right, yeah, let that dry and we'll do the next one. Okay, uh, next up we're going to do the helmet. Now, I like to do, I mean, looking at pictures, they did seem to have a slightly different coloured helmet to their uniform so I'm going to accentuate this slightly really just so that it makes it look um, just just pops a bit better so I've got here this is Vallejo uh, US dark green uh, which is a very very dark green indeed um, which works really nicely so I'm just going to slap that on and I'm using too big a brush really but I'm, paint, I'm filming this away from where I normally paint, so I just grabbed what I thought and I forgot I needed a bigger brush, but never mind. Uh, let's just slap that on and we'll just let that apply to the helmet. Like that. There we go. <laughs> and normally I do these in batches. Um, so actually what I did with my first lot was I actually stuck it, I stuck them to their Games of War or Flames of War um, 
spaces in the positions because they're quite well spaced out and you get round them to, with the paintbrush so uh, that's what I did and um, which means holding them's a lot easier as well so that's that done um, we'll carry on with the next stage so next up I'm going to be using this uh, scale 75 it's rubbed off but I think it's it's a leather color of some kind um, and I'm going to do the uh, belts and pouches on the figure there's a an ammo belt there uh, that looks like that's just the band we'll do the band holding his um, blanket around there just a little bit more paint on the brush there we go and I will do his um, entrenching tool as well all in this brown color remember these are just 15 mil so you're not gonna you don't need to do incredibly detailed but just sort of generally in the principle of, around the general areas now I think that's all you can see on him he's got a shoulder bag uh, coming down here which I'm going to do a different color um, and um, the bedroll stroke blanket coming down so yeah so that's it uh, some of the figures have a proper belt some of them don't this one doesn't not that it's noticeable anyway it's sort of hidden behind here um, so we'll just leave that second just clean the brush and now we'll do we'll do that uh, that bag that we saw so I'm going to use uh, for me I'm just going to use this um, game color heavy gold brown any kind of um, ta um, I guess sort of sandy color would probably do that sort of thing imagine it's a canvas bag but I want to give it a little bit of difference from the khaki color that I've got um, so just put a bit more light in the subject whoops that's better right so the strap runs down here and into the bag that's sort of there behind his arm and behind the sling of the gun all done right that's that done and um, we'll leave that to dry for a few minutes and start with the next stage okay this guy's got a bed roll so I'm going to use this uh, scale 75 winter grey but any kind of grey colour will do nicely I think um, we'll just pop it round like this just work our way round the, where the bed roll sits on his shoulder like that half of this painting this scale figures is about finding what features you really need to pick out which bits actually go where and which bits actually make no difference at all whether you paint them or not really so we'll do that this side I did put the, the strap holding the, uh, the bed roll there we go oh, we're getting there so next up is going to be oh, it's probably a bit underneath that gun that we need to do just under here I think that's part of the bedroll it is now and part of that actually is the rifle butt right that's that um, let's see what we do next for the gun so the gun I'm going to do the stock and the wooden bits you've been using this old warlord's uh, wood brown so I think yeah that is the stock of the gun there just carry on round here try not to get his hands 
just the lower half of the of the rifle so we're pretty much done i've just got a little bit of on the gray there it's just oops well i've still got some gray on the piece of paper let's just touch that off there we go was a bit cavalier not that you'd probably see it in the end anyway so that's that done um i'm gonna let that dry and we'll go to the last couple of stages right so next up i'm going to do the um the 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 metal bits of the rifle so i'm using this uh, vallejo natural steel um, which i quite like as a sort of bit of sheen on it um you've got to be a little bit delicate with this i'm just going to get some on the end of this fine brush and I'm just going to try and run it down the top of the gun and then at the end just do it like that that shows up hopefully that shows up there's also a bit of a stock a bit of a um, um, magazine under here so we'll just do a bit of silver on that and on the other side of the figure we'll just do exactly the same thing just run the brush along the edge of the figure there we go we've only got a couple more stages to go not exactly looking impressive just yet but we're getting there Remember, they are 15 mil figures. <laughs> you don't have to go completely bananas. So finally, for the painting stages, I'm going to use this Warlord's khaki webbing. Again, only kind of palish colour, but that sort of stands out a little bit from the um, khaki of the figure itself. And I'm going to use it to do the the rifle strap so believe it or not that's the figure pretty much done there's just one vital stage to bring it all together but I'll let that dry thoroughly before I even attempt that so back in a bit okay so Ivan is pretty much finished he's dry um, all we're going to do now is apply a wash now in my scabby little tray thing here I've got a mixture um, it is about 50% um, camo shade the GW uh, camo and about 50% non oil and then a, a little bit of uh, a few splashes of um, mixing medium um, and then all I'm going to do is apply that all over the figure every bit of him getting a good dosing again not easy when I'm using my fingers to hold this guy normally it'd be on a base of some sort but I thought it was easier to see There we go. A good amount slopped all over. Make, whoa! Making sure I get into every little nook and cranny. There. Happy with that. Can you see that? Hopefully, you can see that. And the mixture of the camo and the null really works uh, to bring out, uh, well, tone down the colours to make him a little bit darker, but also to bring out uh, the highlights on such a tiny model as that. Right, we'll leave him to dry thoroughly this time, and uh, I'll show what show you what um, he looks like when he's dry. So here we go. The uh, infantry um, have been finished off and based up on their regular bases i've um used um uh, it wasn't actually vallejo mud but it was a very it was a similar kind of product um sort of instant mud effectively spread all over the bases 
um, and then um, a number of tufts just sort of uh, pushed into that and then the whole thing varnished with the matte varnish and um, I, I'm really delighted with the effect I think this works really nicely as a simple and you know simple um, way of painting um, a large number of Russian infantry um, same principle I applied with the uh, with the uh, um, anti-tank gun this is the 57 millimeter um, exactly the same process on the crew here that um, camo and non oil uh, wash really accentuates gives you the the creases and the uh, edges on the on the or well, the belts and everything but also helps with the camo shading so uh, with the you know the um, coats and what have you so I, I think it comes out really nice and really pleased with the effect so um, yeah and I think these all based up together will look pretty pretty sweet right let's get on with painting some of the vehicles next um, these are assault tanks um, I've made up two as uh, ISU 152 assault guns with 152 millimeter gun that's one and that's two and then these are the ISU uh, 122s which have the 122 millimeter gun on them um, I thought I mean two one of each would be great and what I've done with all these all my tanks for this set is I have matte blacked them all with um, in this case it was um, don't even, actually, I don't even know where I got uh, the, the, the spray paint from, but it's a very black spray paint. I've made sure I've got everything on them, so they're well and truly coated in it. Um, and then I'm going to take, uh, this is a Vallejo flat green uh, colour, and I'm going to drag brush with quite a big heavy brush here, um, all over, let's just move one of these aside, keep Let's start with the 122, shall we? I'm just going to use the brush to coat all the upper surfaces. I don't want to get into the recesses and don't worry that it looks quite bright. This colour dulls down. That's why it's called flat. So we're just going to do the whole tank. And there you go, that's him done, oh, missed a little bit above the gun there, let's do that again, there we go, um, there we go, and you see it's already started to dry into sort of a, a very matte flat green, um, which I think is perfect for a Russian tank, so I'll let that dry, so I will do a couple more well I let this one dry and we'll come back for the next stage okay so um, I've neglected to film um, one bit here so apologies for that I've done the tracks both the one on the front and the side tracks and also the uh, machine gun on top um, using a mixture of roughly 50-50 uh, natural steel and uh, the black uniform aka paints doesn't have to be those ones specifically um, just slap them all around the tracks haven't bothered underneath because these are going to be based but all around the edging and obviously the tracks at the front again you don't have to be 100 percent accurate i can see a couple of bits where i'd miss slightly because i'm going to give this a bit of a dry brush at the end of the end of the painting job but next in and these are pretty much done now um, I'm going to go in and pick out some of the uh, actually this one doesn't have too much um, the, the um, IS uh, 2s and the uh, uh, SUs have um, quite a lot of sort of pickaxes and hammers and things on them this this one doesn't seem to have as many there's a sort of pipe or something running there there's some kind of uh, restraining device <laughs> I don't know what that is there. Um, otherwise, there doesn't seem to be an awful lot. So I'm just going to pick those out using the steel, uh, natural steel. And, um, yeah, and I think then 
this baby is pretty much done I'm just going to try and put some transfers on it um, and then uh, I'll come back and show you the next stage right so we're almost done with these tanks uh, or these assault guns anyway um, I have uh, as you saw just sort of finished off uh, the tracks uh, picked out um, with some gun metal some of the pipe work that I fancied just having a little bit uh, showing up um, I used the um, um, steel color um, Vallejo steel I think it's called um, and I've also put on um, some of the transfers that you get in the kit so uh, some stars a Russian star there um, a slogan there another um, star on the back um, just sort of liberally put those on. Um, they were a bit tricky to get on, but they went on in the end. Um, now I'm going to, we're almost done, I'm going to use um, Citadel Shade, um, Athonian Camo Shade. Um, it's a nice sort of greeny coloured um, wash, and we are just literally, if I find my brush, I don't wear a brush, there it is, going to apply this really liberally all over our model like whoops a bit more liberally than that Don there we go just going to apply that all over the vehicle just give it a thorough washing um, make sure you do it uh, you know this is the next day since I did those transfers um, because uh, sometimes they can still even when they seem to be stuck can come off and they're so infuriating when you've spent ages positioning them getting them exactly where you want them to do um, for them to lift off so um, yeah give it plenty of time let's say these would put on overnight I've been left overnight basically um, do that track oops there's always reaching around the camera is always challenging so, just a good coating of the wash all over it. And then we're going to leave this again to dry absolutely thoroughly before we do the last stage of the painting. So, I'll be back when this is dried. So here we go, the wash has dried, the vehicle um, is ready for the final stage which is going to be a really light dry brush. Um, I'm using uh, deck tan from AK Interactive, um, but any kind of off-white will do nicely and always the way with any kind of dry brush is really minimal amount on the end of the brush. This is a makeup brush I think. Um, picked it up, it's the cheapest way I found it, it's nice and soft just working put a little bit on your brush and then rub most of it off on the paper and on a piece of paper that's how I do it and then just work it all over the highlighted bits so that you've got you just pick up the edges give them a little bit of definition There we go, and I think that will do nicely. So you don't want to overdo it, just want enough just to put a little bit of a shine on the edges. And there we have it, the vehicle is done. Really impressed with these uh, lovely little vehicles. So um, next up I'm going to base them because I like to base my vehicles um, and um, and then I'll show you what they all look like. And there we go, they're all finished, all based up. Um, as I showed you, I'm using the Vallejo, well, similar sort of Vallejo mud. I think it was actually um, Ravel or something mud. Anyway, doesn't matter. That kind of liquid mud, um, which I think is really effective. Um, and you can see on the bigger bases here, I've uh, just put lots of clumps, um, sort of bits of tufts and what have you around them just to sort of, uh, make them look like they're on a battlefield um, so you've got the squads of infantry here uh, I've got some spares um, and I'm making up a whole load more that are 15 mils that will match in nicely with these 
Uh, there's the officer stand there. Commissar with his foghorn there. And the Maxim machine guns here. At the back here, you've got the anti-tank guns. These are the 76 and these are the 57s. Um, I did two of each just to split, just to make it up. Uh, you've got the BA armoured cars here and the Su 76 is at the back. Love how these have come out really nice. And then uh, the, the big mothers. You've got the IS-2s. Now, if you look at a lot of the illustrations, they had white lines and things around the turrets. Uh, I just didn't trust my um, freehand to do that well enough, so I've just kept them as straight uh, Russian green um, and put the logos on, put the um, uh, emblems on and what have you. You've got the ISU 122s with the long guns here and the IS 152s. Uh, uh, so 122s and 152s, the short howitzer things, big old mothers. And I'm really, really pleased with how this army came out. It took me just over a week, actually. I got really into the swing of doing it. Um, really enjoyed pulling them all together. So much so I've uh, added to it and got a whole load more to add to this army. But anyway, I thought you'd like to see the unboxing, painting, and so forth. Sorry, the wind's blowing the uh, blinds. Um, but uh, yeah, really, I really can't uh, say speak highly enough of those uh, models from the uh, Flames of War box set. Really impressed, really, really impressed. And model, the infantry as well, very high quality. Um, give a lovely look for a 15mm figure. Very good indeed. And with that wash, I think it comes out pretty good. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like. Uh, hit that subscribe button. I can't promise to be doing any Flames of War because I won't be. Um, but I will be doing uh, some O group using these. Um, so hit that subscribe button if you want to see some more content from me. Um, like, share, subscribe. Tell your mum. All that kind of good stuff. And I will see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out. Music